Hey everyone, Miss Go Electric here. I really love to go camping and spend my time outdoors. And now I've been thinking about taking my e-bikes that have particularly large batteries and going out to remote places and exploring on my e-bikes. If I do that, I need a way to be able to charge after riding all day. Well, I've been trying to figure out if there's a solution for that. And I think I may have found one. And we are gonna explore that solution today. This is the Van Power Super Power Pro 2000 Power Station. Now, 2000 because this has a capacity of over 2000 watt hours, which is equivalent to over two kilowatt hours. This can charge even my biggest e-bike batteries, among a lot of other things. So I definitely wanna get into it and explore exactly what this can do. So let's dive into the unboxing and then we'll test it out. Now this box came in another box and while I'm opening this box, it looks like there's a lot of really thick foam in here to protect this device. So let's pull that out. There's also a plastic wrapping around it so it doesn't get scratched up. There are two handles on the top of this power station and one is specifically made to lift it up and out. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, there's one more item in the bottom of the box here. Looks like it is a case that might have some extra things in here. We'll check this out in a second. Let me move all of this stuff out of the way. Before I get into the nuts and bolts, let's talk about what this power station can do. When it's fully charged, it holds enough electricity to be able to recharge a smartphone anywhere between 100 and 150 times. It can also power a small fridge for about a day, a CPAP machine for several nights, and household appliances like a blender or a microwave, or even a hairdryer for hours. This Super Power Pro 2000 weighs about 50 pounds, but all that weight is not just the battery. This also has a converter that will take AC power from the wall and an inverter that will take the power from the battery and deliver it to AC devices. The housing is a heavy duty plastic and it feels like it's gonna be very durable. Now what also feels durable is the handle here, which has a spring loaded mechanism in it. And it also has some rubberized material down here. So when you're lifting it, it's more comfortable for your hand. I also like this metal telescoping luggage handle here. It feels like it's gonna be pretty durable as well. And when I have this up, then I can roll it on these thick plastic wheels that have a really deep groove so I can get it around much easier. There are vents on the side here and they contain two fans on either side. So four in total that will automatically turn on when the cooling is needed. There's also six 110 volt AC power outlets on the side and they're rotated like this so that you can use different sized power banks and not have them collide. As far as DC outputs go, this has a 12 volt port on the side that is just like a cigarette lighter in your car. You have four USB-C ports two of which can support 100 watts, so you could plug a laptop directly into it to charge it, and three DC barrel ports. And for inputs, you can use the AC from your wall and charge this in about an hour, you'll get to 80%, and a full charge in about two hours. As far as DC inputs goes, this has a XT60 port so that you can plug it into solar panels or your car to recharge it. Now that we've covered the basic specifications, let's cover some of the cool technology that I didn't expect. This power station has GPS and a 4G data connection so that you can connect it with the app and do things like turn it on and off. You can locate it. You can also change the ambient lighting here so that you can make it any color. This also supports over the air updates for bug fixes, adding features and efficiency improvements. And as you can see, there's a 6.1 inch screen here. And as part of one of my favorite things to do with new devices, pull off this plastic. Now this is the first time I've ever owned one of these devices and they send along this little quick guide here that gives you every bit of specifications and it has clear readings of exactly how to hook up everything and what the screens mean. So let me go over some of that here with you. To turn on the SuperPower Pro 2000, all you have to do is press this power button here. 
as you probably heard, it beeped to let me know that it turned on. And the first thing that you'll notice is that it'll have a very bright reading of what the state of charge is. This is at 98%. Over here is the input, it's zero watts. The output is zero watts as well because I have nothing plugged in and as a result, I have 999 minutes remaining, which is probably because that's as big of a reading as it can display. By default, all of these ports on the front are ready to be used, but if I wanna use the DC 12 volt on the side, I'd have to press this button here. You'll notice that it has a green light right next to it to let me know it's on, and there's a symbol here for the 12 volt hookup on the bottom right corner. If I wanna utilize the AC power, I'd press this button, and that also has a little green light to let me start utilizing those plugs on the side. This power station comes with a cable that you would plug into the wall, just like you would have for a personal desktop computer. And speaking of that, you can actually use this as an uninterruptible power supply. So the way that would work is you would plug this into the wall and then plug in your other devices like a computer or your monitor on the other side and the power will pass through it until there is a power outage. Then this will kick on and immediately give you power to your devices so you don't skip a beat. So let's see what other cables and accessories that we have in this case here. First, we have two adapters that will allow you to plug into the USB-C port and on the other side, it has a USB-A. Next is the XT60 connector that will have the 12 volt on the other side. This way you can plug this into the power station and then plug it into your car so that your car can charge the power station. Finally, this one here is an XT60 connector that will allow you to plug into the solar panel so that you can charge this device using the solar panels. This cable can bring in 600 watts of solar power and it should be able to fully charge the power station even on a cloudy day. And speaking of that, Van Powers sent me 400 watts of solar panels. So let's open those up and check them out. kind of cool. I like this space theme that it has to it, but it looks like it comes to... Ah! What is it? What is it? Ah! Oh my god, oh my god. Wait until you see that video. Oh, there he is. There he is. Look at him. 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 Oh, no. No, no, no. All right, the solar spider has left the building, I hope. So let's get on with it. This is a really nice bag. It has a zipper enclosure that is gonna let me open this up all the way, which is really nice. The outer bag looks to have a weather resistant type of material here, so it should be protected from the elements. And then the solar panel itself has this fabric material and some handles, so I might even be able to carry it around without the bag. And then there's a zipper pouch here on the front of it, which has the connector in the junction box here to connect it to the power station. So this is a pair of panels here that outputs up to 200 watts at 36 volts. Let's unbuckle it and open it up. The handles here have a nice rubberized material on them too, so it makes it comfortable when you're carrying it around. All right, Solar Spider, one. Miss Go Electric, zero. We give up the shelter, but that's okay because I had to set up the solar panels anyway. I have the one that I was unfolding over here all set up, and I actually put up the second solar panel, which is another 200 watts. So 400 watts total, and I've connected them in series and plugged them into the power station here. I initially started with a 320 watt input and it looks like now that there's some cloud coverage, it's dropped down to oh, 96 watts here. This number here tells me that there's 13.6 hours until I get to zero. So I am discharging. But if I was charging, it would change to telling me how much remaining time there is to get back up to 100%. 
I may have been a little frazzled by the spiders, so we decided to change locations. This time, we captured the setup process. I unpacked the first set of 200 watt sun power monocrystalline cells and aimed the panels directly at the sun. Van Powers claims up to 23% efficiency and 95% transmittance with up to 40,000 lux absorption. The 45 degree props on the back worked out to an ideal angle when on a flat surface like this one. The 16 pound solar array felt stable and durable as if they'd hold up and fairly strong winds. The SPP2000 is fairly easy to wheel around. I avoid lifting it. Each solar array has a pocket containing a fairly short MC4 connection cable. While the ETFE coated panels are scratch and waterproof, the junction box is IP65 rated for dust and a little rain. Try to keep that dry. The next step is to grab the supplied XT60 to MC4 connector cable. First, I connected each solar connector to the cable, and then I connected the solar arrays to one another. With the circuit complete, I plugged the XT60 into the Van Powers power station. I turned the power station on and BAM! I could see over 300 watts of incoming power from the 400 watt array. Even with mixed clouds, I should be able to fully charge a depleted SPP2000 in one day. The solar panels also come with this cable which provides DC current from an MC4 connection to a car charger, DC7909, DC5521, and Anderson connections. That should cover most of the bases if you'd like to use the panels with a different power station brand. Fun fact, Van Powers also makes one of my favorite e-bikes from the 2022 review season. This bike is called the City Vancher. Using renewable energy from the sun, I was able to connect the bike's AC adapter to charge at full speed. A full SPP2000 battery can charge the City Vancher battery up to eight times. Van Powers claims that's at least 400 miles of electric riding. Okay, now that I've spent some time with the Van Power Super Power Pro 2000, it's time to share my thoughts on the things that I like about it and the things that I'd like to see improved. First, let's start with the things that I like. One is the design. Overall, I think it's a good looking device. It's also very intuitive and made of very high quality materials. And it's also really functional. I like that it has these handles here, so it makes it very portable, especially with the trolley handle with the wheels here, so I can take it wherever I want. And the fact that this is packaged really nicely with the accessories and the solar panels that transport easily with it is a really high bonus for me. Next is probably the most obvious, and that is capability. This is about two kilowatt hours of storage, which is a lot. And I've talked about all the ways that you can use this type of storage to power a lot of different things. But also the bigger story probably is the fact that this can do such high power output and input. This device is named the Super Power Pro 2000, but actually the output peak is up to 3000 watts by using the super amp mode in the app. And I just can't imagine needing that much power, but I do appreciate that extra headroom. The input power is really impressive as well. You have 1800 watts coming in on the AC side and then 600 watts coming in on the DC side. And simultaneously, you can use those together to bring in 2400 watts. Now, if you have this plugged into a wall and you're pulling the full 1800 watts, then Van Power says this will charge up in about an hour to 80%. I like how Van Powers has come up with some creative uses for this device. And one of those more significant to me is the uninterruptible power supply. Myself and people that I know with home offices already invest in a UPS so that when the power goes out, I have just enough time to save the data and shut down my computer. But the problem with the typical UPS system is that they have low capacity lead acid batteries and you have to replace them every few years. So I'd rather take that money and investment and put it into something like this that has way more utility and versatility that I can not only use it as a UPS, but also take it out camping and things of that nature. Another way this device goes above and beyond is it's 4G connectivity and GPS locator. The next time I go camping, I'm gonna share app access to this power station with my parents so that they can see exactly where my camping site is. That way, if I lose my phone or break it, or if something happens to me, they can easily track me down. The GPS is also helpful if someone tries to steal it so that I can track it down. With the 4G and Wi-Fi capability, this allows me to use this as a smart switch. So from anywhere in the world, I can turn on and off that power, but I can also see what's being drawn. 
Lastly, there are a lot of power stations on the market to choose from, and a lot of them don't have many or any safety certifications. This one has plenty. I also appreciate the extra safety of the grounding bolt here. Now, let's move on to the improvements I'd like to see. As far as physical components go, the only opportunity for improvement that I see is the wheels. These are a durable hard plastic that are great for the outdoors. If I were a musician and I was taking this across the venue or if I was taking it through my home to my office, I could see these damaging the wood floors. So I really think a rubberized material would not only solve that problem, but it would also make it a lot quieter when I'm wheeling it around. The app functionality for this device is definitely a pro, but the dependency on the app is a con, and here's why. Out of the box by default, this device is going to pull 1800 watts AC out of the wall, and if you have anything else connected to that circuit, it is going to trip it. The cool thing is, is that Van Powers allows you to reduce the wattage draw, but you can only do it through the app. This is also the case for turning on and off the UPS feature, the sleep mode so that this display goes dark and it's a quieter operation, and the super amp so that you can access 50% more power. The problem with that is you have to log into the Van Powers account every time you want to use the app. That means you can't directly communicate with the phone and the device unless you have an internet connection. A lot of the time the app works fine, but I have encountered some problems. For example, when I tried to log in, there was a server error repeatedly over and over again. And when I contacted technical support, they fixed something on their side within about a day. But then the next time I tried to log in and I was able to get in there, it was not showing my device. And then the next time after that, it was showing the device, but then it was disconnected. So I would prefer to have an app that doesn't rely on an internet connection and that I could use directly to communicate with the device. Fundamentally, I think that the app dependency is a big concern, but overall, this is one of my favorite Go Electric devices and I'm gonna be using this a ton. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this review. And if you're interested in learning more or wanting to buy a Van Powers Super Power Pro 2000, then see the link in the description below. Van Powers might help support the Misco Electric channel if they find we're helping their customers find the right product for them. Well, until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric. <laughs>